There are hundreds of tourist attractions in Los Angeles, and one of the most fascinating things that is often overlooked is the Fort MacArthur Museum in San Pedro. Come with me as we show you these tourist delights at this truly unique and one-of-a-kind museum. We're talking with Steve Nelson, the director curator of Fort MacArthur Museum. And Steve, this looks a very interesting situation here. What exactly is this? Well, right here you are looking at a 14-inch uh, shell. This is the type of shell that was fired from the guns here at Fort MacArthur. We had a range of about 14, 13 to 14 miles with these shells. How much does it weigh? 1,460 pounds. And it's kind of a unique shell because it's an armor-piercing shell, if you notice all. It doesn't sound very meaty, does it? It sounds kind of flimsy and what have you, and it is. That's because this section here is a windscreen. It's merely designed to keep the shell flying true and flying in a, you know, a spiral motion, and so that when it hits the target, this shell, this windscreen breaks off and the armor piercing part comes behind it and will penetrate the armor. And, and it could do a lot of damage. It could do a lot of damage. We're so familiar with cell phones and telephones today in communication, and it caught my attention, these tubes here. Uh, what, what exactly are they, Steve? These are your speaking tubes. This is how you communicated through the fort. Now, they did have telephones at this time, but you have to remember, when you fire a shell as big as the one that we've seen, the concussion from that blast will oftentimes separate the telephone line from its terminal. These never fail. This is your backup redundant system. It always works, it's always dependable, and that's why they used them in the Army. We just talked a few minutes ago, you showed us that extraordinary huge shell. Now this is obviously not a shell, but what is this? This is the next step in continental defense. During World War I and World War II, the major threat was perceived to come by sea. After World War II, it, the threat was perceived to come by air. And so this is a Nike Ajax missile, it was a conventional missile that would have been fired up to defend us during the, the Cold War. And uh, I think Rancho Palos Verde City Hall is sitting on top of, or very close to, a Nike base. So these are very, very close to our sort of community. We may not know what they are, but they were there for the better part of, uh, gosh, you know, 30 years protecting us. So, so one of these would have been where Rancho Palos Verdes City Hall is? Well, there probably would have been 16 of them there, or, ah. or, or more, and later on when they came out with the Hercules missile, those, it's believed, actually had nuclear-equipped warheads. So think about that as we drive down the beach and look at these wonderful things that at one time we were being protected by nuclear missiles right here. We're pausing by what looked to me like a huge turbine, but I'm absolutely stunned to find out this is a gun barrel? Well, it is a replica of what, a, what the gun barrel, the breech system, would look like on one of our giant guns out in the, in the pits. And what sort of size shell? I mean, this is absolutely enormous. That's your 14-inch diameter, so that shell w that we saw in our discussion, that would have been put inside here with 400 pounds of gunpowder behind it. Steve, this is probably one of the most weird looking things I've ever seen, and I'm sure it's military in nature, but what exactly is it? Well, believe it or not, John, it's, it's a very rare gun mount. Unfortunately, you wouldn't know that from the looks of it. The condition is really poor. There are an estimated four of these in the world, and this is one. Our long-term mission will be, of course, to rebuild this and get it into its configuration. This was a 90 millimeter gun, and it was the type that protected the mouth of the harbor. There were two of these located in Bluff Park in Long Beach, and two of them located on the Gaffey Bulge, which is right here as you enter Angels Gate Park. Okay. We shot some footage of some really incredible events and sort of recreations. Um, I'm wondering if you could tell our viewers, I believe that's one of your main events of the year. What exactly is that? It has everything to do with history. And part of our mission, it isn't just to get people involved in Fort MacArthur, although that's a, the primary, but to get people to even think about stuff. And this event basically welcomes in people who interpret Roman era history, Revolutionary War history, Civil War history, World War I, World War II, any military history at all. This is a weekend that they can come together and share with people.
This is a uh, uniform that the 1st United States Dragoons wore while operating in California at Fort Tejone, which is a state historic park off of uh, Interstate 5, about uh, 75 miles north of Los Angeles now. Uh, and this is what they call the uniform of model of 1851, which was inspired off of French fashions. Uh, which is French well, fashions? French, well, they were the preeminent uh, military power in the world right at that time. They just got done uh, fighting the Napoleonic Wars, and they were operating in several areas in the Korean War in the 1850s as well. So the United States was copying not only England, but France as well as our, as far as our military fashions go. I started out as an Air Force major. Because of my height and glasses and a leather jacket, they kept asking, where's your hat, General? Where's your pipe? So I thought, well, if I went out and got a hat, got a decent pipe, put stars on as opposed to a major, that's your only change. That's a quick promotion. <laughs> it's still a khaki shirt and pants. It's really kind of basic. Well, you know, you get a, the, the American units get a lot of uh, a lot of press around here, and you always see the movies with, you know, Band of Brothers and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's important to let people know that there were a lot of, you know, the Allies were a, a big group of nations that, that helped defeat the Axis during World War II.